Good evening. This is The Report with me, Jonathan Steele. In tonight's programme, we'll be looking at the intensifying crisis in Yarmouk refugee camp in Syria. We'll also be looking at comments by the former head of the National Counterterrorism Security Office about the causes of radicalisation in British prisons. But first, clashes in the eastern province of al Amawiya in Saudi Arabia last Sunday have reignited debates about sectarian conflict in the wider region. Nasli Tasi takes a look at the latest incident to have rocked the kingdom. These are the sounds of raging machine guns fired by Saudi police in a remarkably underreported security raid that erupted in Al Awami Shiri district last Sunday. The shifting balance of power in the region since Yemen's slide towards civil war has reignited fears of sectarian hostilities similar to those the kingdom witnessed back in 2011. The few reports which have come in believe that the sporadic clashes came immediately after a government hunt for those they suspect of terrorism was launched in the eastern town. The repeated firing killed one individual, wounded four and resulted in the arrest of many others. State-run media sources stated that in their search, security forces recovered unlawful weaponry, including pistols and communications equipment from suspects who reportedly targeted security personnel. News of what took place surfaced following the circulation of a video on social media sites showing Saudi security forces raiding homes and arresting clusters of people across several locations. The event brings to light the fog of apparent power struggle between Saudi's Shiri community and the government, which has reached alarming heights over the last few decades. While Saudi's Shia are accused of reaching for power by the government, the community has long enunciated the demand of inclusion and an end to discrimination. The uneasy relationship the two share, while framed by local and international media as secretarian, is equally understood as a pursuit for power. An incident mirroring Sunday's clashes also took place in December last year. Four individuals were shot during a raid on a hideout where men the government described as terrorists had been residing. Although the kingdom denies accusations of marginalising the Shiris of Saudi, many still hold the government responsible for what they perceive to be systematic discrimination. What the latest gunfire battle in El Amawiya suggests, however, is that many people live in the fear that a secretarian-motivated and government-led attack is near every day. Nasli Tazi, The Report. Well, joining me on Skype to discuss the situation in Saudi Arabia is Sabah al Mukhtar, political commentator and legal expert. And on the line is Mamun al Abbasi, who is news editor at Middle East Eye. Welcome to the programme. Um, Mamun al Abbasi, let me start with you. I mean, we've seen images such as these circulating around social media since Sunday. W what is the, the, the story as far as you can tell behind them? Um, well, the incident uh, in terms of clashes was restricted to Sunday only. Uh, there were some protests, small protests yesterday, Monday, but the actual clashes were uh, happened on Sunday. There were calls um, to demonstrate against the war in Yemen, and the police and security forces got there to the area to prevent them, but they were called off at the last minute. Uh, it's not clear who started the clashes and how they were started and with who were they militants, were they just armed locals, but it resulted with the death of one uh, uh, so soldier or police officer, Corporal Majid al Tahpani, and the, uh, the police retaliated with sending four, 40 armored vehicles, and, and it was a very heavy security presence there. So you but say that, that ended, that you... ended on, on Sunday night. Uh, what happened yesterday was, a, was just a, a protest that was uh, unstopped. So you're saying it is connected with Yemen, so it's different from previous trouble in the Shia it, areas of Saudi Arabia that happened it, in the previous months and years? It, it is different. Not, not the, very, very much. I mean, the last incident that you mentioned was in December, but it's been qu rather quiet since 2012. Not because things are rosy there, that there's, there's trouble, but it had, it had done down the Arab Spring mood that started in 2011, had died down there because of government crackdown, obviously. But the, the latest incident was, was related to calls to protest against the war in Yemen. Um, Sabah al Mukhtar, let me come to you. I mean, the Saudi government have claimed that there's a link between Iran and what's going on in Yemen with the Houthis and so on. Have they also tried to suggest that uh, Iran is involved in, 
in d d disturbances in the Shia areas of their own country, Saudi Arabia? Well, the eastern region of Saudi Arabia has always had seen these problems because it's underdeveloped, because the government is accused of uh, practicing uh, discrimination against the population there, both in terms of development and in terms of opportunities. Uh, this area is next to Bahrain, and Bahrain is involved to a certain degree in struggle domestically, and both of them are near to Iran, and Iran, at least if it doesn't get involved, it sympathizes and assists and probably propagate and provoke the idea. But at the end of the day, the responsibility remains with the government of Saudi Arabia because it should not allow the people to get to that position so that they have to uh, take action in this way. But I think this time, most certainly, it's been provoked by the action of Saudi Arabia against Yemen, because we can see throughout the region, both in, in Iraq and Lebanon and, and Syria and other places, and certainly in Iran, there is a, a heightened uh, uh, attention toward Saudi Arabia, and there are accusations of Saudi Arabia invading Yemen and killing civilians, etc. So there is this is this is the 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 thing which provoked it, but in a, in an area which has always been un, uh, uh, not so rest. So when you say invading, uh, allegations that Saudi Arabians are invading Yemen, you mean they're not? It's not just air bombing. It, it, they're actually ground troops uh, inside Yemen. No, 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 no. By invading, you could invade through the air. I'm not talking about uh, uh, soldier uh, boots on the on the ground yet. But I think at the end of the day, this is how it is viewed. By uh, this is how it was analyzed, expressed by the Iranian authorities that Saudi Arabia and all these other countries they all teamed up to invade Yemen. They are uh, taking uh, military action against them. And there is the risk of them getting involved in terms of sending troops. Maman al -Abbasi, I mean, everything is put into the lens of Sunni versus Shia and sectarian strife and so on. But isn't it the case that in earlier trouble in Yemen, the Houthis, who are Zaidi Shia, were linked to Saudi Arabia because they were royalists and they were fighting to protect the or to, to defend the, the imam against uh, leftist uh, groups so that it wasn't sectarian at all? Um, unfortunately, it has become sectarian. It's, it's adopted a sectarian tone. In origin, it was, a, it was not sectarian. It was never sectarian. The Houthis, funny enough, not only did they get uh, uh, Saudi help in the 60s uh, against Nasser, they also received weapons from Israel to fight Nasser. So all this talk about death to the Jews and death to Israel sounds ironic. Uh, if they're, they're very opportunities, and so a lot of political players in the region. Unfortunately, it, it became later a sectarian with, with people with, um, from different parts of the sectarian divide taking different positions. So you'd have automatically the, the channels that are uh, pro-Iranian or anti-Saudi automatically starting with the Houthis, regardless of their, their, their own human rights violations, their own killing of civilians, the way they treat children, the way they have child soldiers, all of that doesn't matter. They, they just focus on the Saudi side. And obviously Saudi's allies also just they, they make the campaign sound rosy and just a, another uh, a campaign of pro-democracy, forgetting about you know, Saudi's role in crushing democracy, for example, in Egypt. Well, how bad is it for the Shia population in, in Saudi Arabia? I mean, uh, they, they, they're in an underdeveloped part of the country, but, but there are other underdeveloped parts of the country, aren't there, which are not Shia? That, that's true. That's true. I mean, that's the thing that we, we must look at. Saudi Arabia... In general, there are many, many uh, parts which are underdeveloped. Maybe I would say there is a slightly uh, uh, some sort of a cultural cultural tensions with the with the Shiites, but the problem is beyond the government. If you if you look at the social media or we talk to the average Saudi, um, the majority of Saudis are not very happy and they look very negatively towards the people on Qatif. That's a social problem that must be fixed. It must be dealt with by the government instead of um, you know they should try to tackle it. They should shut down. To try to tone down um, some of the sectarian rhetoric, but that problem is not um, just in in, uh, in the Qatif. It's not just in Saudi Arabia. Unfortunately, that's part that's part and part of, of the whole region. You have the Ahwaz, the Arab minority in in Iran suffering. You have the Sunni minority in Iran suffering, and you have many minorities suffering. And Sabah al Mukhtar, I mean, are you surprised that Saudi Arabia has taken such a interventionist line in Yemen 
um, when, when they were asked to do something similar in Iraq uh, against IS there, by the Americans particularly, they've been quite cautious about being uh, openly involved. Well, I'm not surprised because the, the underbelly of Saudi Arabia is Yemen, and they are concerned about that one. The threat is more serious than from ISIS or the Shiites in Iraq. Uh, Saudi Arabia did, didn't want to get involved in any of these things. When we look at the Palestinian case at Gaza and all these things, Saudi Arabia has always shied away from this. I think this time there are the important thing is that they felt there is a, a security risk for the kingdom itself. Especially, I understand that the Houthis have moved some of the uh, heavy weapons uh, toward the border of Saudi Arabia, some of the uh, rocket launchers and what have you, earlier before the intervention. So I think Saudi acted this time principally because of its own security concern rather than the principle. Although there is the underlying element now, especially in the most of the Arab countries, about Iran and its involvement, especially with the pronouncements that Iran has made, that uh, Iran is now has taken over four countries, that extends from the Mediterranean to the Red Sea, to the Indian Ocean and the Persian Gulf, that the capital of the Persian Empire is Baghdad. All these statements make people in the Arab countries very weary, and especially that we can see it actually being translated in Lebanon, in Iraq, in Syria, in Yemen, and there are other influences which is going on uh, uh, on, on that. But the idea, it's not, I don't think it is a Shia Sunni thing, but because it's principally, you can lump the people in this one. It's not unlike the d description we used to have in the UK about Northern Ireland, as if it's a Catholic Protestant uh, 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 conflict, while in fact, neither of them was looking at that. It was a, a political movement, uh, but it is taking this, this uh, facet because of the nature of the people there. And Mamoun al Abbas, just a last point. I mean, the, the United States, they're, they're not obviously going to say anything publicly about what Saudi Arabia is doing in Yemen, but do you think uh, they were informed about it in advance? Did they give a green light, as it were, or do you think they've got some concerns about Saudi intervention in Yemen? Um, the, the Americans were flying their drones even during the time where the, where the Houthis were in charge of Sanha. So for them, it doesn't matter who they deal with as, as, as long as they can provide them some sort of security and, and they can continue their fight against Al-Qaeda. With regard to the strikes specifically, I, I hear that the Saudis have informed them at the last minute, but how accurate is that, I, I really can't say. Well, thank you for that. We'll have to end the discussion there. Thank you, Mamun. Thank you, Sabah al Mukta. Now, in other news, in Nigeria, the conflict between government forces and the group Boko Haram continues, as gunmen have attacked Muslim worshippers in a remote northeastern town, killing at least 24 people. Nathaniel Amos Sansam has more on this and the rest of today's news.